Welcome to our living room! This is From the Disney Couch, and you're joining us on the quest for the ultimate Disney movie. We're pretty excited about tonight's movie. It is... Beauty and the Beast. Yay! Yes. I've been looking forward to this one for so long. This is Emma, my buddy pal. Be our guest! Be our guest! Be our guest! That was bad. We were in our high school production of Beauty and the Beast together. I was a lowly plate. But she, she was the bookseller. She had lines. I had six lines and two songs. It was great. <laughs> I think it goes without saying that we have all seen Beauty and the Beast and yep. probably multiple times. This was one of the very first of the Disney Renaissance movies that I went and saw in the movie theater and I definitely will never forget the ballroom scene. Alright, so without further ado, Beauty and the Beast. Amazing, still an amazing movie. Oh, I always wonder on the Disney couch, how am I going to react when I see one of these Disney movies that I've seen so many times, but it's still such a great story. I was crying at the end there. It was probably the best one we've seen so far. I love the music, I love the characters, I love everything about it. It's on one list as the best animated movie of all time, mm -hmm. and so it's definitely up there. Um, I had fun watching it this time, watching all the background characters. There's a lot of tiny little gags that happen yeah. between the background characters that yeah. I never noticed before. And the story is so great because you get so invested in the characters. Early on in the movie, you get on the beast's side, and yeah. you want him to win the day. I think the thing that resonates with so many people about this movie is that, is that it is a story of redemption. Those are the stories that really grab our hearts. That's what we all want in life, so we connect with movies that are about that. I mean, I still think the bookseller is absolutely the star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I see a lot of interesting parallels between Gaston and the Beast. They both start out as entitled in positions of power over Belle, both expecting things of her. Mm -hmm. The only difference then is how it turns out. The Beast, of course, loves her and discovers that true worth comes from inside. Mm -hmm. And Gaston, on the other hand... He starts spiraling downward. And here's something I find interesting, is that Belle is put in the same situation twice in the movie. When her father is captured by the Beast, she chooses to take his place, yeah. to give up her freedom in order to save her father. Then later, Gaston has Maurice captured, and Belle chooses not to give up her freedom and say she married Gaston. Shows how much she hates Gaston. Yeah, I guess so. And I would say it shows character development. She's no longer this oddball other isolated with only her father as her connection to anyone else. She's got a family now at the castle. She's got love. She doesn't need to anchor herself to the only thing she has. I really enjoyed the music. I like, I was singing and dancing along, like, every song, I couldn't help myself, I burst it out, I got everything memorized here. And I was doing all the really high go. <laughs> While Jaira was singing and dancing, she was also making art. Yeah. I like this picture because it's, like, very clearly from Gaston's perspective, you can really tell how Short LeFou is. If you want to see more like that, Lots. follow me on Doodles for Boredom on Instagram. Have you ever wondered what kind of animal the beast is? A whole bunch. Yes. The animators drew the beast with buffalo head and horns, ears of a deer, <laughs> the eyebrows of a gorilla, the jaws, teeth, and mane of a lion, the tusks of a wild boar, arms and body of a bear, and the legs and tail of a wolf. If you That's ever want to scary. build your own beast, then there you go. And let's find out how many points Beauty and the Beast can rack up on our ultimate Disney scale. I got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> to the chart! The kiss. Yes! yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It definitely was kind of the most kissy of the kisses. Yeah. You know it? I don't know. I think Little Mermaid was bigger. 
let us know in the comments which one you think is the better kiss out of these two. Yes, so definitely had uh, quite a kiss. Mm -hmm. Do it! Well, what about Beauty and the Beast? Seems like it, but it wasn't. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast, the actual song, turned into a duet over the credits with oh. Celine Dion and the other guy. And so they made a great duet out of Beauty and the Beast, but it was not Beauty and the Beast singing that one. Okay. What, but what about something there? There's two people. They are singing yeah. about yeah. each other, yeah. how they're in love. And but they're singing the same song. Yeah. They just aren't doing harmony. It was not a duet. Yeah, yeah. It, there were a lot. There was. It was like five people singing. That's not a duet. I would love to call it a duet because it really is like the time when the Beast and Belle are singing, but they're just not ever singing together. Okay, let's put this to a couch vote. Show me your thumbs in three, two, one, go. Two half marks, two full marks, one no mark. Give it a half point for duet. Hit song. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Celine. The great 91 version of Beauty and the Beast uh, made it in the top 40. It was like number two in Canada because okay. Celine. This won the Grammy for best pop duo group vocal performance. What? That is, I'm shocked by that. I yeah. thought maybe it was more like movie related Oscar, but just. Yeah, Grammy Award well, for best pop duo. That was when Celine was definitely on her I don't even there. know. Celine is. Yeah, you're young. I mean, really, as far as hit songs, the Be Our Guest is probably the sort of song and dance number that everyone remembers from the movie. Yes. It's, it's so memorable, so. Witchy villain. No. No. Well, dark. He's not witchy. Yeah, he's he's just, not using witchcraft. He's yeah. just no. The only one that was using magic was the Beast. Really, well, the, the enchantress. enchantress. The Beast didn't use magic. He used a magical artifact that was, I might add, lime green. Yeah, that's bum, true. Bum. And I noticed this. The mirror shows people at the worst possible moments. It shows Maurice dying. It shows the Beast roaring. It shows Belle talking nasty things about the Beast. Is it a live feed? And is what the Enchantress a villain at all? Wow. Yeah, it's like listening to gossip. Don't mess yeah. with an Enchantress whether she's beautiful or not. Ugly villain. Gaston ain't so ugly. Okay, so... He's hairy though. So Gaston... Every last inch of him. <laughs> covered in hair. <laughs> and he winked at the camera when he said that. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna There's be able God. to unsee that. I definitely remember seeing that scene where he rips his shirt open. Sorry, hairy chested guys of the world. But he rips his shirt open and, and you know, it's like hair and every woman in the theater was like, Yo! Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, so well done. Yeah. So originally they tried to make Gaston a typical Disney villain, which as you can see from our chart, a lot of them are really ugly. Yeah. The director suggested to the animator making Gaston that he make him good looking. Yeah. And it was like going against the grain right. to make a good looking villain, but I think they pulled it off pretty well. For yeah. sure. I think Gaston is clearly the villain. He's not ugly. Wait, you know? but I can think of another villain. Who's that? That's the creepy Oh, the, the asylum keeper, yeah, Monsieur Dark. Yes. Yeah, he yeah. definitely Who did the schemey fingers. I know. Quite well. Like, yeah. Bell answers the door. He's like, <laughs> and like, his same. skin is like great. I vote no. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. I think most what? Monsieur Dark was just an accessory to the crime. He wasn't the main villain. Gaston was the main villain, and That's he was true. not ugly. So but I don't think it should get a point. Is it villain singular though? Because LeFou, in this movie at least, is almost as much of a villain as Gaston, and we already established he's pretty ugly. We've gone for secondary villains as the ugly villain in the yeah. past, Have in we? multiple instances. Okay, well, there's some disagreement here, so let's put it to a couch vote. Ugly villain, three, two, one, go. I am clearly outvoted. <laughs> Just okay. because, as Jaira said, we have looked at some of the secondary characters. Death by Falling. Yes! Yeah. 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 Uh, classic. Yeah. I believe if you look right back at our intro video, we featured Gaston under the category Death by Falling. This is like the Death by Falling I always think of when I'm trying to think of an ideal Death by Falling. Yeah. You know, he's like trying to kill the beast and then he's like, oh, wait, no, I'm not killing anyone, I'm falling. And yeah. it's his own fault. The interesting trivia on this one, we paused it and actually saw it, that 
for about two frames as Gaston is falling, it's a close up of his eyes and reflected in his eyeballs you see two skulls. Yeah. So as creepy. he's looking down at the ground. He's looking like down he's kind of falling seeing backward. his death. Yeah. It's chilling. For a lighter subject, alcohol. <laughs> I mean, here's what my favorite scene with the alcohol in this one. He shoots with his musket, the keg, and they're not surprised. They just put their mugs out yeah. and they catch <laughs> That's a good point. It's happened before. <laughs> it's yeah, it's true. And it's very blatant. Uh, it's more than I can bear. More beer? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> helps. Yeah. Does he pay for the barrel he shoots? No. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Question. I, I think he owns that pub. Yeah, he actually You know, like, like he he's it. got his throne in the corner <laughs> there. <laughs> and he uses antlers and all of his decorating and he points to the wall of the pub. Like maybe this is his living room. I don't know. <laughs> Missing parents. Yeah. Yes. Where's Belle's mom? And where's Chip's dad? And the beast parents. But definitely our main missing parent is Belle's mother. Yeah. Um, she is raised by the Disney single father. So they weren't really like in your face with the orphan angle on this one, but it was definitely there. Dad with the stash. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Got a great dad stash here. Yes. Has a stash. Love that Disney dad stash. And he's Mostly. really short and portly. This kind of follows the stereotype that we've seen in some other dads, like Prince Charming's dad and Prince Philip's dad. They were both like short and stout and had these nice mustaches. Talking animals. Whoa, what about Philip? Philip doesn't speak. Yeah. Philip doesn't speak. Philippe, he's a very Philippe. smart horse. But wait, what about the beast. The beast. <laughs> he is like a wolf and a lion no. and a. But he's not an girl. animal. Yeah, yeah, he's an enchanted what prince. What is he? Philippe, doesn't he nod at some point in this movie? Yeah, no. he did. Yeah. I just feel Old like we gave smart. a few Disney movies that didn't have talking animals, but it had animals that communicated yeah. with their humans, and like I Snow think White. That counts. In Peter Pan, I think we gave it a point because of Nana the dog, who was smarter than your average dog. She could spell. She was like the caregiver for the children. My question is, is Philippe the horse at that level? Or, oh, no. you know, yeah, you're right. right. Couch vote. Talking animals. Three, two, one. Three down, one half, one up, so Zippo. It's got too much talking other stuff in it. Yeah, That's true. It's true. Talking. talking clocks. Unlikely partnership. Well, no. Chip and Maurice. No. Lumiere and Cogsworth. No. The Beauty and the Beast. No. I think Dark and Gaston. No. Philippe and the Wolves. No. But there's no unlikely partnership. Okay, All right, bye. bye. Hit a Mickey. Yeah, there were. There was a really great one in the plate. There was a not so great one that I didn't see for a while in the trees. There was There's one fog. Like... There was a great one in the library. There were a lot. And also some great Easter eggs, like uh, the signposts in the forest. One was pointing to Anaheim. It was really like scratched up and whatnot. One was to Valencia. Yeah. Or where Cal Arts is, where yeah. they all learned how to draw. So yes, hit him, Mickey. The book intro. I had a stained glass intro. Does that yeah. count? It was no. a prologue. It I was. Would... It was pretty close to a book. But it yeah. wasn't. A but book it wasn't. Opening. Let's no. uh, a book. Yeah, no a book. Story. Resurrection. Yes. Yeah. This is a beautiful resurrection week. We've got Disney sparkles. We have confirmed death. And especially uh, cried when she was like, you know, it's gonna be okay. We can be together now. Like just total denial that he's dying. Yeah. Oh. Okay, Jaira. Beauty and the Beast, what is our final ultimate Disney score? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. Nine and a half points for Beauty and the Beast. So that puts it up there. It's tied at second place, tied with Cinderella and Snow White. Second only to Sleeping Beauty, we got a lot of princesses going on here. If you love Beauty and the Beast as much as we did, and you've got your favorite parts you'd like to comment about, leave it in the section down below. Or if you hate it, you think it's totally overrated and lame, we'd love to hear your thoughts too. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the Disney movies we'll be reviewing next. And make sure to like and share with your friends. We'll see you next week for Aladdin. Aladdin. Ooh. So from the Disney couch, bye for now. Bye. Now can we watch the bonus features? Sorry, we've got Emma. We don't need bonus features. <laughs>